And have you had any experience that you traveled for a long time and you came back home? Have you any of that experience? Okay, how, how long? For a month? For a year? Wow. Okay. So how did you feel when you come back home? Did you like it? Yeah. You know, even every day, if you had a long day at the, at the job and then at school, if you had a long day and then you're coming back home and then you knew your bed is ready and you're going to jump in the bed, bed, bed on your bed. So that's going to be very um, warm and then uh, loving. So now, now Naomi and Ruth left Moab and came back to Bethlehem, Judah. But Naomi had a mixed emotions. Even though she's coming back home after 10 years, he, she had a mix, uh, mixed emotions. As we were coming back um, to her hometown, as she was coming back to ho her hometown, it was very quite different, quite different um, situation of hers. So we're going to share about a little bit. So let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you so much for calling us here right now. We believe you are at work for your glory, for our blessings, to mend our hearts, to heal our wounds. So Lord, please open our hearts and minds so that we can listen to you, so that we can understand your will, so that we can become better disciples of Jesus. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Oh, by the way, we changed the uh, uh, things that we will not have church, um, children's church during the service. That means they can worship with us. How exciting, right? So please enjoy the sound of future. If they are chatting each other, if they are crawling under the pew, enjoy it, okay? <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> I was the one who was playing on, under the pew and then uh, sleeping um, behind my parents. So, yeah. So when they came, to, came back to Bethlehem, their, uh, Naomi's hometown, the scripture says like this. When they had, yeah, this is the map of the land of Canaan. And then... If you see it, yeah, they left from Bethlehem to Moab, and they came back from Moab to Bethlehem. Now, the scripture says, when they had come to Bethlehem, that all the city was excited because of them. And the women said, is this Naomi? You know, they were excited. So we can, we can tell Naomi and her family was very prominent, and then she was well-loved by the whole town. So, like all of you, when you are coming back, whole DeSoto will be delighted, all right? <laughs> wow, is this the person? So after 10 years, she came back home, but they couldn't see, they couldn't see Elimelech or Malon and Kilian. And beside, beside uh, her, there was a Moabite woman. Maybe she was wearing different clothes. Maybe she was wearing different um, jewelries or something like that. They could, they could notice, oh, she's not an Israelite. And then they knew they didn't have daughter. So the Moabite woman, Ruth, was noticeable. And they came into town, and then they were wondering, is this Naomi? And Naomi seemed to have been a well-loved in that um, town, but he, she said like this, don't call me Naomi. She told them, call me Mara. What do you mean? What does that mean? You know, Naomi meant pleasant, and then Mara meant bitter. So she was like saying like, don't call me pleasant, call me bitter, because my life is bitter. She lost her husband when they moved to Moab. She lost her husband and two precious sons. 
Now she came back home with one of the daughters-in-law. So why did Naomi tell the women to call her bitter, not pleasant? Many people do not distinguish themselves from the situation. When the situation is bad and it's not going as they wanted, they tend to degrade, de degrade themselves there and their life. When their life is going good and then they were like so proud of themselves, but when their life is going wrong, they feel like my life is terrible. So I'm a terrible person. I don't worth living. And then many people make a choice, a bad choices. But situations can be better or worse. But we remain as beloved children of God. We have to remember that. No matter what people are calling us, people are saying us about us, or talk to, talking about us, no matter what situation we are in, you know, we can have ups and downs, but our value is the same. We are the beloved children of God. And we have to, we have to teach this truth to our next generations as well. They are beloved children of God. And they should know it and learn it and feel it. Because her situation was bitter, Naomi thought she became bitter. And she thought it was God who caused all the troubles. It was God who made me like this. So she blamed God like this, because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. I went away, I went away full, but the Lord, the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. It's all because of God. She said that. And she charged God not only with oversight of her pain, but also responsibility for it. It is God who actively made my life miserable. God was purposefully against me. But can anybody, any of us blame her? I can't. Because I, I did like that. I did the same. I don't think many of us can blame Naomi because we've been there. When things are so bad and the situation is getting worse and worse and then you don't know what to do. We've been there blaming God. Why God? But we are not the only ones. Let's see what the great people of faith did when they were in distress. Okay? What about Job? He said like this, he would crush me with a storm and multiply my wounds for no reason, which means I have no fault, but with no reason he did to me. He, he would not let me catch my breath, but would overwhelm me with misery. If it is a matter of strength, he is mighty. And if it is a matter of justice, who can challenge him? Okay. Being sar sarcastic, right? And in short, it seems that he was saying, I'm innocent, but God is bullying me. And now David, the great king, he says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from my cries of anguish. My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer by night, but I find no rest. David was crying out to God, feeling forgotten, feeling forgotten by God. What about Jeremiah the prophet, the man of God? He's going to be different. But he said, he has walled, walled me in so I cannot escape. He has weighed me down with chains. Even when I call out or cry for help, he shuts out my prayer. He has barred me, barred my way with blocks of stone. He has made my path, paths crooked. 
Jeremiah the prophet says, in the time of his trial, God had become terrible, terrible to him. Okay, then what about Jesus? About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice on the cross, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But we know later Job, Job's life was restored later and then doubled blessed with the double blessings. And David became a powerful king. And Jeremiah was set free from captivity and then kept being used by God as a prophet for the Israelites. And Jesus was resurrected from the dead. We know that. But they all were in tremendous distress in their lives. At the time, they truly and, and just genuinely expressed their emotion and their thoughts to God. You know, many people just, they just try to avoid facing their troubles. So uh, many are drawn to other entertainment, like extra drinks or more time to, to games or social media or burn off their anxiety at gym, you know. You know, cat, um, you know a lot of running and, and weight training and then they just want to forget it. Just avoid facing it. And some people just blame their lives and complaining. But I would like to encourage you to sit before God and with true state of your heart. It could be anger. It could be fear. Or it could be grief or questions or doubt or any other emotions that can have. It could be just numbness and you have no feeling and then unbelief. I don't believe you, God. I can't believe you're, you exist. You know, just sit down before God and express your honest feeling and emotion and, and your thoughts. Because our God is big enough to embrace all our emotions and complaints and, and all our pain and suffering. Trust me, He's not going to scold you, ah, you're too, too rude to me, to the Almighty, you know. He's our good father. He knows everything about us. We don't have to avoid. He listens to us. Now, right after, you know, she said, Naomi said, God did this to me. And then she was, you know, facing God. But right after Naomi's complaint and blame against God, the scripture goes like this. So, Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, arriving in Bethlehem as the barley harvest was beginning. Can you feel in the midst of his, uh, her bitterness, blaming and complaining against God, this is the, um, the glimpse of hope as the barley harvest was beginning. Because she left Bethlehem, the, the house of bread, because of the famine, because of lack of food. Now as she's coming back home, there is a barley harvest time. It was beginning. And we can glimpse, there's a hope and God's care and God will do something for Naomi and Ruth. Even though Naomi blamed God, we can see the little light at the end of the tunnel. During this harvest season in the grain field, God will do things that Naomi never imagined. And by the way, all of a sudden, the scripture mentions Ruth's nationality, the Moabite. In chapter um, 2, uh, verse 2 also says, and Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi. It shows Ruth, Ruth's life was not better than, you know, not worse, huh, worse or better than Naomi's. Because she left her home and she also lost her husband. In her young age, 
possibly she was only teenager age, teen age or early 20s in considering the custom of the Near East, ancient Near East um, customs. And then she could, she, maybe she, could, she had to live for the rest of her life as a widow, as a poor widow, as a poor Moabite widow in Israel. He was, she was the one who could complain a lot. Because actually, um, Moabites were not welcomed in Israel society. And they were not actually, um, they were forbidden to be to the assembly of the Lord that refers to the body of the citizens. And in the, uh, Deuteronomy, sorry, the Deuteronomy says, no Ammonite or Moabite or any of their descendants may enter the assembly of the Lord, not even in the 10th generation. Because they didn't welcome uh, Israelites and they were against the Israelites. So they were forbidden to be included in this assembly of God. But when you read the Bible, even though they were not allowed, you know, God allowed individuals who had faith, who wanted to be in the um, people of God, who believed God, they were included, they were welcomed. Maybe many of you remember Rahab, who was the resident um, in the Can and the Jericho, the Canaanite, Can Canaanite woman in Jericho. When Jericho was about to fall by the Israelites, the residents, the, all the city, uh, residents of the city, they were afraid of the Israelites. And then the Israelites sent two spies in the city, and then Rahab, um, Rahab, heed them. And then she said, we heard, we heard what God did for you. And then we heard God split the Red Sea and saved you on the dry land. And then we heard that you defeated, God defeated the powerful kings. So we know you're going to take this land. So please save me. Please save my life and my, my uh, family. I believe, I know your God is powerful. I, I believe your God. So her life and her family's life was spared later. And then later she became the part of the Israelites, even though she was a Canaanite woman. Even though the society might have had bias against Moabites, Ruth didn't care about it. She didn't care about it. She said to Naomi, let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone in, in whose eye, eyes I, I find favor. So she was so brave, right? Maybe she, as she was entering into the city, maybe she saw people are whispering each other. And then maybe she knew that these are like were hostile against Moabites. But alone, by herself, she wanted to go outside and go to the field to get some food. Ruth lost her husband too, and she was a widow as well. But she was not sitting crying or blaming or self-pity, self-pity party or something like that, or blaming God. Instead, she might have thought, I'm glad I'm here among the God's people that, that I wanted. I'm glad I'm not afraid of them because they are God's people and I love them and I'm not going to let myself and my mother-in-law starve. I'm not going to let the situation get bitter. I'm going to stand up and then go to work. I'm going to go to work to feed myself and then feed my mother-in-law. That's why she stood up and then let me go out. Let me go out and work. She had a great strength, great inner strength because of God, because of faith. Even though the, her situation was so bad, she didn't care about it. And she stood up and then went outside and to work. And she rolled up her sleeves and get to work. 
we learned how stubborn she was, right? When Naomi tried to persuade her to go back, you know, go back to your parents and then your culture, your gods, your society, your family, and then have husband and remarry. I don't have any hope. Go find hope. And then she was like, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me be so severely if, if death separates you and me. So through Ruth, the woman of faith, in this field of grain, God did an amazing thing. Do you know what happened next? When she went into the grain field, what ha- do you know what happened? Come back next Sunday. <laughs> I will tell you. <laughs> yeah. Even though the situation didn't seem to be good, regardless of what people talk about her, Ruth was glad to come to the, under the wings of God where she found a home and true herself. She wanted to be a part of God's people, and she came to the land, promised land, where she was glad. One of my colleagues during the Imago Dialogue tra- Therapy training, there was a Reverend Jiang, and she was born in 1950 uh, during the Korean War. And she, <laughs> was always, she always thought she was not enough and not worthy. She didn't know why, but as she was growing up, she felt she was not worthy. So she always gave up her opportunity uh, instead of others, even though she wanted to do something. She just, okay, um, let me back up and then you do it like that. And before her mother passed away, her mother told her a story. During the Korean War, she was a baby, apparently. She was born in 1950. And then while her family and other Korean refugees were hiding from Chinese soldiers in the uh, complete silence, if they were discovered, not only her family, but also all the other refugees will be killed at the time. Maybe baby was hungry or uncomfortable, she began to cry. Reverend Zhang began to cry, and then they were about to be discovered. So what her mom did was putting a blanket over her face, thinking if she dies, she dies. I don't know, maybe in her unconsciousness, I am not supposed to cry. I'm not supposed to ask, request my need because I'm not worthy. You know, this unconsciousness is so powerful when you see the babies. So as she was growing up, until she became, became an adult, she felt that she was not worthy. But she met Jesus Christ and she found that she was beloved daughter of God, and her life was completely changed. She always say, I'm a treasure, and then you are the treasure in my life. God puts you in my life. You all are, all of you are treasure. And then she is very passionate about helping people to find, find their value in front of God as children, beloved children of God. We might have moments that we feel our life is bitter, and we think we might think we are bitter, we are bitterness, and we are not worthy. But in God, we can find our true self, true value, not by the judgment of people, bias or our appearance, ability, or any other things, but by God's grace, by God's God's grace we can find who we are through ourselves. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your grace upon us. Thanks to your grace upon us through Jesus Christ, you saved us, you called us as your beloved children. So Lord, please help us find ourselves and then find who we are so that we can live our lives as powerful children of God, as just like Ruth didn't mind at all about her situation and stood up and then went to work. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.